Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'm here to share my third set of alternatives cards using the February 2024 paper pumpkin kit named Sweet Springtime. So if you missed my other videos, you can find those in my YouTube channel. Just click on the channel and then videos and there'll be a list of all the videos I've created as well as the unboxing for this kit. So before we begin, let me thank those of you who have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for your subscription. And if you are new or have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. I've set a hefty goal for this year and I hope to get to 5,000 subscribers. So if you can be a part of that by subscribing, I would greatly appreciate your subscription and leave me a comment below if you do so I can thank you. So before we begin, let me take care of some Stampin' Up! business. So going on now is the subscription period for the March Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is going to be named Memorable Meadows. Now March is a special kit you don't want to miss out on because March is the anniversary month when Paper Pumpkin first started. So in that kit, we're going to get an additional free stamp set. And you can see that here. I know my printer may not be the best coloring, but you get a hint of what it is. So we will get two stamp sets in this kit. So don't miss out on that. It also coordinates with the Meandering Meadows Sweet Collection, which the sweet, uh, I think is sold out because there's something not available. But um, the sweet is 162745. It was an online exclusive, so you want to head over to the stampinup.com website and look at online exclusives. Don't overlook those. We're going to get, get a garden green spot. So also for this quarter, Stampin' Up! has issued these add-on dies. And last I checked, they were still available. I have them right here. So we got four nice uh, dies. I love this leaf. It has some little etching in it for its veins, the love, and I love the label. It has stitching, which if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I love labels with stitching, as well as this little daffodil, which I've used in my other alternatives. So don't miss out on those. The item number for it is 164396. Okay, also going on for a few more days is celebration. So celebration is a time of year when you purchase items from Stampin' Up! of $50 or more merchandise, but before tax and shipping, you get to choose a free item either out of the celebration uh, booklet right here or some things they have added calling more to celebrate. So you can find all those items on the Stampin' Up! website. Just look at specials and there will be celebration items. Now these might be selling out. So if you have some on your list that you haven't received yet, you might want to grab that while they're still available. If you're just a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, know that you're, you can prepay for your subscriptions in three months, six months, or 12 months. Six months just happens to be my favorite. Um, so you can purchase that and that would qualify you for either two $50 items or a $100 item. And I have used this before in my $100 item favorite. So don't miss out on that set either. Um, if you do not have a demonstrator, I would appreciate you using my host code. This is good through the end of February. I'll have a new one starting March and um, if you purchase $75 or more in merchandise, you will receive a special gift from me, thanking you for choosing me as your demonstrator. All right, so let's get started. I think we're about ready to begin. Now, I'm gonna bring in my first card, and these little envelopes, I have five by seven, seven by nine. I love to store my card components in them when I'm getting ready for these videos or just cards I haven't completed yet. And they're what I call my favorite things. So I am an Amazon affiliate and in the video description of this video and all my others, I have a list of my favorite things and links to where you can purchase these. So as an Amazon affiliate, I get a few pennies at no cost to you when you use these links. And if you have used them or plan to use them in the future, thank you so much for your support. Um, this one, the seven by almost, 10, I think the description says seven by nine, um, also holds 
all the paper pumpkin components as well as the instructions. So it's nice to keep these in a tidier, smaller container than the box. So um, in case you're wondering, that's what these are. I always have a question. So if you're new, I like to explain everything. Those of you that have been subscribers, thanks for hanging in while I go over some stuff. All right, for this first card, we're gonna use a thick white card base. Okay, I'm gonna have an embossed layer. Now this one, I did use the celebration one for that $100 item called Softly Sophisticated. And it gives a nice little embossing of some stitching. And then we're gonna use part of the slimline card. Now let me grab out a full one so you can see. So you can get two cards out of just half. I should still have some available in here. Here, here is one. Okay, so, well this one's already cut. No, it's not. So this is your slimline card that comes in the kit. So what I did for this is I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again and then I trimmed it to five and three eighths, which is the measurements of this embossed layer of four and one eighth by five and three eighths, so it would fit there. So you could actually make four of these, but I'm holding on to the other half in case I come up with another alternative. Um, actually, I'm gonna make as many as uses this label. So then you need this little label from the kit, this one. Now, I wasn't a fan of the pre-printed chick, so we're gonna cover that up, but we're gonna use um, the components. I like to try to use all the supplies in the kit so you don't have anything or maybe just a few things left over. And as you can see here, this is what I trimmed off the bottom of that slimline card. So you could use this for a label or something if you don't have any extra cardstock. Okay, and then um, I've pre-cut some leaves using the Love of Spring add-on dies, as well as the Bow Punch. And that's in Granny Apple Green. So I have three of those. And then um, I have lots of stuff. <laughs> I have a chick from our stamp set, pre-stamped and cut out. And then we're gonna do our bunnies so I can show you how I color those. So let me grab all this stuff, stick it back in uh, my envelope so I don't lose it. But I wanted to give you a heads up in case you wanted to pull those items out of your kit or make those die cuts. So let me get out my Stamparatus and I'll show you how I do this. Now I have shared back at the 1st of October of 23, how I use my scan and cut with my paper pumpkin stamp sets. And so that's what I'm gonna show you here. Um, to actually get the cuts, you can refer to that video and I'll sh and it'll explain starting to finish of how I get this all done. Anyway, I saved the negative pieces and that's where I put these pre-cut um, white pieces for my stamps. So I'm gonna put the bunny there. I'm gonna get out my Memento black ink. I think I have a mini one. He's hiding, but here's my full size. And let's ink up the bunny. Sorry, I should do it with my left hand so I don't get my whole arm in the video. Okay, and so he's in the negative spot. And I'm just gonna press down, give a moment for the ink to uh, absorb. And there he is. So, you know, this is fairly quick as you can see, then I can just put another bunny in and do it with my left hand and so on. So I can just keep stamping my bunnies after I get them all cut out. Now, if you don't have a stampin' up, uh, excuse me, not a stampin' up, a scan and cut, I think the bunny might be pretty easy to cut, fussy cut. So you can give that a try. All right, so now we're gonna do our coloring and sometimes I like to stick them back in the negative. You can see here I have some color. And I'm gonna use crumb cake to make him a little brown bunny. So I have my um, brown blending brush inside. Now I'm gonna start very lightly because I might have swirled a lot of ink on there. 
Although I think my ink pad's close to needing some re-inker on it. By the way, that's other things you might want to consider for your ink spots that you have is getting the refills so you can uh, start your collection of ink colors and be able to re-ink them. Because as a little bitty spot, there's not a lot of ink, so you might run out of that quick. Also remember that uh, at the end of April, the end colors that end this year before we get new ones, um, grab up those refills before they're gone. It seems like those are the first things to go whenever they announce the retirement list. So I'll just give you a heads up on that. And that is Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, and Tahitian Tide, as well as the cardstock. So if, you, if those are some of your favorite colors, be sure and get the refills for that. So that's how we're gonna color this bunny. But I like to add a little pink to his ears. So I've used the coordinating color of Petal Pink. Now the blends would work. I happen to have the markers. Or you could probably also use um, Petal Pink ink with a blender pen to add some color. And I'm just going to go along his nose and mouth, give him a little color there. Now the chick, um, actually in our watercolor pencils, there is a... Daffodil Delight, and a Pumpkin Pie. And that's what I'm gonna use to color the chick with. You could also use blending brushes. Um, I will bring in the blender pen to help smooth this color. What I love about the watercolor pencils is you can just scribble a little color and then uh, blend it in with this is a blender pen. Now they come in a pack of three. I do have a pack out. So what I like to do is dedicate one end to like a color family, the yellows. That way I don't waste a lot of the juices that are in the blender pen by having to rub off the color. So a pack or two would get you probably uh, been able to do that. And then his little feet, I'm gonna, it's very tiny. So I'm gonna try to bring in some pumpkin pie here for his feet and his little, um, okay, it's hard to talk and do dainty stuff. So, okay, so there is our chick. And we just have some couple other extra bunnies. I'm going to put them back in my um, organized little pockets. Now, these are the small three by five ones. So I like to store this in here so I don't lose them, as well as I pre-cut some labels and have those ready to go as well. All right, so let's bring out our card components back. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna start by adhering this embossed layer uh, onto my card base. Now, if you don't have uh, embossing folders or a die cut and emboss machine, you can just do this on plain white and not have the embossed layer. I just really, um, like how this adds such detail and texture to a card. Let me feel, okay, this one is the front. And what I'm saying there is, so I pre-make my own card bases and when you score them or cut them, you may be just a hair off and one side may be bigger than the other. So you can see here that you can see the front um, or you can see that this side is longer. So I like to make that the front, that way it's one, it's easier to open the card, and two, you don't see the, the overlay. All right, and then we're gonna adhere this piece that comes from the kit. I do try really hard in my alternatives. Even though I add additional supplies, I try to use all of the kit, or at least mo most of it. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna attempt to stamp the bottom of this <laughs> freehand. Now the good news is if I mess up, I could go in with a label, but I'm gonna try to put the sentiment right on this as straight as I can. 
So I'm going to do that in Momento ink. Now, if this is your first kit, the early espresso would be just fine. I just like this to be in black. All right, and I'm going to put that right here along the bottom. Welcome, baby. Again, you could use any sentiment you want. I needed some baby cards in my stash, so I've made a few baby cards for this kit. That came out really good with no fuzzies, which is good. Okay, and then we're going to start building our scene to cover up these funky looking <laughs> chicks on this die cut. I don't know why I think they're just kind of funky looking. Let's bring this over here so that as we build, we make sure we don't go off the card so it fits in our envelopes. And here, you know what? I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape along. Because I think I've got some here along this so I can start sticking them down. Since we're gonna cover up the chicks, I know I can put them all across them. All right, let's take off the tape, the tape part. All right, and let's start building. So, have that one going like that. This one like this. And then for our chick, our bunny, we're gonna put him along, but I need to add some additional adhesive because I don't know if there's enough to hold the bunny down. Let's go ahead and do his ears too. All right, let's put the bunny there. And the chick, we're gonna have to overlap the with the bunny a little bit to cover up that pre-printed chick, which I think is fine. I'm okay with that. And each one of yours may uh, wind up a little different, so don't be afraid to give it a try. All right, so I just like that a whole lot better than the pre-printed bunnies on there. They're kind of creepy, I think. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's just me. Everybody, as I like to say, I'll do me, you do you. All right, and then I'm going to stick some uh, daffodils. Gosh, in my first video, I was all over dandelion because we had a dandelion kit in December. And I couldn't get daffodil out. I kept saying dandelion. Okay, so these are the pre-printed daffodils. I wanted to use those since we had those in our kit. And so that is our basic scene. It looks like I got a little glue. Now, this is one of my favorite things too. It's a uh, glue eraser. Whoops. And even like here where it kind of oozed out, if you hold your die cut so it doesn't tear, you can get additional adhesive that may have oozed out to help make your card look a little better. So that's our basic scene. Now I didn't use the bow punch. So if you, again, don't have a die cut machine, uh, the bow punch would be a great thing to add as a paper pumpkin subscriber because you could easily make the same thing with those leaves. But I'm gonna stick with those that I already did. I'd just like to show you options. Let me put up my extra supplies that I didn't use just to keep my area neat. Okay, now this is a label that I haven't used yet. And if you wanted to use the uh, other greeting called Springtime Greetings that I believe fits on here, um, or maybe the Happy Easter, then this would be a great option to add this now. But as you can see, the Welcome Baby didn't fit. So I didn't use that on this card anyway. So now we're gonna put this all up on dimensionals. I have a little box. These are the boxes that our previous wood mounted stamps came in years ago and I repurposed those to hold supplies as I did convert all my wood mounted stamps to clean. Now that was one of my very, very first videos I did. Um, if you're interested in seeing that, 
and I do cut these in half as you can see but I still spread them all over so I find that that's enough and these are the larger um, dimensional all right so I give them a little press and then take off the backing now I'm lucky to have pretty good nails even though some of them have broken like my thumb I've seen people use the take your pick tool to get the dimensional backings off but okay I got them all and then let's set this about here okay so that is our first alternative here is the one I made previously and I used the distressed tile 3d embossing folder there um, the only other thing I may do is add some embellishments I think every card needs a little bling we had uh, white looking ones in the kit which would look cute along here but no you can also color those if you have the blends alcohol markers you can color those with that I've also used a sharpie before to color them so those are just some ideas I like to give to you all right so that is our first card let me put it away and we'll get on to our second card now the second card I get out all the supplies I think this one's going to go together pretty quickly whoops so we need a card base we need the wreath that came with the kit um, and then we need this label and then an embossed layer which I've done too and you can tell me which one you would like this is from the basics 3d embossing folder and this is the same softly sophisticated one I thought I would just um, show that as an option and then I uh, wanted to add some detail to this leaf because I thought he was pretty plain if that's all you have it's perfectly good but I like to show uh, those for my more avid crafter or something so I have this set that I've had for a while and this is what sold me on the whole set of course I put them in here so they wouldn't get tangled and they still got tangled okay this is a wreath for lack of a better word from the natural prints dies and so as you can see here it has a nice leaf it has some additional nice leaves but I and this actually worked out really well with this leaf so I'm going to use that to add some detail to that wreath and so let's begin so I'm going to put this one on this card and I can use this on my third one so this is going to use the softly sophisticated and again I like to do my layers just a little smaller than my card base so these are four and one eighth by five and three eighths just kind of I love the multi-purpose glue because I can move it around to make sure it's pretty centered okay and then we're going to add our wreath to this so the best thing I know to do is just kind of put some dots on this wreath and hope to hit most of the leaves here we're going to glue this down let's see if looks like I got some so I'm going to get out my silicone mat I hope it's right here he's been flopping around well he is not so I'll just let him lay like that while we continue so now I am going to use this label and again I brought in a paper pumpkin stamp from let me see was it March I think I have it over here Oh, it was from April of 2023 I love this stamp set for all the little uh, sentiments we have here so I needed some Mother's Day cards mom if you're watching this <laughs> you might be getting one of these cards for Mother's Day and even though it doesn't say Happy Mother's Day um, celebrate today and then on the inside I can write my sentiment um, saying Happy Mother's Day so here's what I like to use my stamp apparatus for also with sentiments so this is the negative from uh, this die in our kit and I did have to trim it because it would hang out too far 
And you don't want your sentiments or to line up right here along this one inch line because it doesn't stamp really well. So you want to move it out. And then if you, when I did it square, I noticed it wasn't straight. So I just adjusted this until the line here on my grid matched the line here on the label. So I can stick that in there. Now first I did put my stamp in the center kind of where I wanted it, tested it out, and then uh, I saw that that worked. So I left that there. And again, I'm going to use my Memento. I guess I should have tried some of these in early espresso, but I just tend to like my sentiments in black. All right, so let's stamp that down. Give it a second for the ink to soak in the paper. And that's a good, a good stamp. So let me just clean that off. Now I have a paper towel that I like to use. And then I bring in my little chamois. It just helps my chamois not get so inked up that I have to uh, rinse it out as often. And I do keep it damp. So right now it's pretty uh, unusually warm <laughs> in Texas. So with my fans going and everything, uh, it would also dry out. So that damp paper towel over my chamois helps keep it from drying out as quick. Okay, so now we can put our card together. Now I am going to try to put this on dimensionals. So let me get those back out. And I need to cut some more ones in half. All right, and then let's just find good places to put this. I see a glue blob there. Let's cover that up. Some there, and this will also help hold it together. I love adding dimensionals and texture, so that's kind of my style. Each of you may have your own style of what you like to add. Let's do one more. Okay, so let's press those down. And then take off the backings. I find these backings all over my house. I think they stick to my socks or shoes or something. And then I find them in my closet. <laughs> okay, so before I exactly adhere this down, I want to see which way I like it, especially because this is a little different. It's, all right, and then I'm going to put my sentiment there. So I think that looks good. Okay, and then because I love dimensionals, why not put this up on dimensionals as well? And try to do it straight. Okay, so there is our card. Now, I only thought it needed a little something else for some shimmer. So I brought in, here's my finished one that I did with the um, Basics 3D embossing folder. That almost left me. So I had this ribbon around. Um, I think it's still current. So it came in the in colors. This one is Sweet Sorbet. Now, sadly, I really didn't think it matched Sweet Sorbet, but um, I thought it goes okay, at least with those. But I also have it in Parakeet Party, which it fell on the floor. And so I needed to use this ribbon up. So I thought, why not use this on the kit? So I have pre-made a bow for this one. And it doesn't show well on the video or in pictures, but in person, it gives it a nice shimmer and it's kind of subtle. I did a better bow here than I did over here. So let's add a glue dot 
to make those. Now I just freehand these bows. I'm also learning how to do the double trick with like a fork. I'm not always that great at it yet. Okay, and the only thing about this ribbon is it may start fraying at the ends, and I think that's okay. It gives it a little whimsical look. Wow, that bow is tons better than this bow here. I don't know quite what I did different, but anyway. So that is my alternative using the wreath. Is that better in view? So thanks for joining me today. I still have uh, envelopes to use up and um, the bunny face. So I hope to have at least one more video using all my supplies. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate your subscription and let me know if you do so, so I can thank you. And if you have any comments or questions, leave those as comments in my video and I try to uh, at least get back to you or say thank you for watching. So again, if the best compliment you can give me is a thumbs up, a subscription to my YouTube channel, and share this with your other crafting friends. So until my next video, I hope you all have a great day. So see you next time. Bye-bye.